Alrighty. So, at this point, we have a character that is clothed. Uh, everything is attached, hair included, and we're ready to export this so that we can import it into Unreal Engine and attach it to the ALS rig. What you want to do is select Export FBX Clothed Character. I don't know if it matters if you set this to Unreal or leave it at 3ds Max at this point, but we'll just set it to Unreal and see how this goes. We'll leave it on default settings. If there seems to be an issue with the textures, I don't think it will with uh, embed textures unchecked. Uh, but if there is, we'll come back and check this and test it again. Um, we want to leave the animation rate at 30 FPX, unless for some reason you know it needs to be set to something different. Leave this at 30 FPX and hit export. This is just telling you that once you export out of here, you can't make any more changes to it. <clears throat> Unless, of course, you come back to your, your saved template and you make the changes again before you export, um, which is perfectly fine. So what we've done is we've exported the model into another file structure. It comes with the files set up for the animations. It comes with the morph targets already set up for facial animation. Uh, it comes with the, that basic set of animations that I showed you. And it should come with all of the textures that are embedded and on the model as they are, including all of the accessories, hair and clothing. So before we import it into Unreal, we want to get Unreal set up to make the import process easier to deal with. You want to go to the Reillusion Character Creator Auto Setup for Unreal Engine for um, <clears throat> website or web page. I will leave a link to this to make it easy to find. Um, you can read through the documentation yourself, but the setup process is pretty simple and straightforward. You want to come down here and find the version that is appropriate for the version of Unreal Engine that you're using, and make sure it is also appropriate for the version of Character Creator and or iClone that you're using as well. I have run into a few issues where um, all of these programs at some point get updated on you and then you run into mismatches with the import process. So you might have to come back here again and check from time to time uh, when things get imported. Um, <clears throat> for now, I've already done this. Uh, for you, you will click download um, and then run the executable that it gives you. And when you do, that executable is going to create this file structure on your C drive. Uh, this is the auto setups that, that I have used for the versions of Unreal Engine that I've used. Um, and in each one of these files are two sets of folders. And in these two sets of folders, you're just going to drag into your project file. Now, to find your project file, in case you don't know where your project file is, you'll launch Epic Games, go to your library for your Unreal Engine projects. In this case, I have this uh, these two different ALS files. If I want to find where they are on my hard drive, I right click on them and say show in folder. That opens up the project file. And once you have that open, what you would do is just simply grab these two files and copy them straight over. Uh, in this case, I'm 
Well, I've already started now, but we're just going to hit uh, replace the destination files. Skip. In my case, in your case, it'll transfer right over because uh, you don't already have these things. Uh, but those are the basic um, textures and shaders and everything set up for Unreal Engine so that it knows how to translate the textures that are coming from Character Creator into Unreal uh, with you having to do the least amount of manual work to get it done. Um, once you have that in place, you'll launch your Unreal Engine file. Uh, in this case, this is my ALS file from Unreal Engine version 4.22. You're probably on 4.26. Um, I developed in VR for the Oculus Rift. Uh, for those reasons, I stay on an older version, but I have this set up in the newer version as well, so I can show you on both uh, if you need me to go through this on both versions. Um, but for now, uh, I'm going to delete this test character that I created earlier, and we're going to go through the import process one more time. So, with Unreal open, uh, resize my windows here. To the folder where you saved the character that you just exported from Character Creator, grab the FBX file for that character and bring them into a folder that you designate in Unreal um, to have all the folders imported to. <clears throat> this message, the auto setup, is not supported for this version of iClone, is because of what I said earlier. Um, this was set up correctly a few months ago when I set this up, but in that amount of time, I've updated my version of Character Creator. Uh, so this version of uh, the CC plugin for Unreal Engine has a mismatch. It still functions, and it'll work well enough for this example, um, but again, you'll bypass that by just updating everything for version 4.26. Of Unreal Engine. When you get to this window in the import process, uh, what we're going to do is make sure that Skeletal Mesh is selected, Import Mesh is selected, and we're going to come down here to Skeleton and choose the ALS Skeleton. And this version of ALS for Unreal Engine 4.22, there's only this one option. In the newer version of ALS, there are many different skeletal options, but there is still one that just says ALS Mannequin Skeleton. Select that one. Also, uh, there is a button here that all of these options are going to be hidden. Um, this little downward arrow right underneath the skeleton, make sure that you expand this and make sure this option, Use TO as Reference Pose, is checked. Um, actually, just copy these settings. Make sure these four are checked, but absolutely make sure this is checked because uh, this is what tells the skeletal mapping to match the skeletal mapping in Unreal and Character Creator. If you don't have this checked, the arms are going to look all rubbery and floppy because it is not matching the proper skeleton size and height. Um, after that's checked, come all the way down to the bottom, leave everything else default. Make sure underneath material, you say create new materials and import texture. And import all. And there's a lot to import, so give it a moment. It takes it a few minutes. All right, so
Okay. So once everything is imported, this is what you get. You get several different folders that break down the materials that are created on the import process. and the textures associated with those materials. I don't know why it breaks them into several folders. I would recommend, well, you guys do what you want in terms of organizing these things. I tend to be very meticulous about my setup, so I always come in here first and put the textures in a texture folder and the materials in a materials folder and just organize everything. Doesn't hurt anything. It, still functions the same way. Unreal sorts everything out pretty pretty clearly. Um, double click on the skeletal mesh, which you'll know is the one underlined in purple. So you can get a look at your model and see how it looks on upon importing. Let's move this over a bit. Um, <clears throat> they always import from character creator in the A pose. We won't worry about the pose just yet because we're about to put it on the ALS template, at which point it'll pick up all of the animations and poses from ALS. Um, there are some things you can tell need a little bit of work, like her face is kind of shiny. You can come into like the material for the head if you come in here and find it. Um, uh, yeah, so if you feel like going in here and tweaking the specular highlighting or whatever, you can tone down the shininess or make it brighter, I guess, if you'd like. But uh, that's how it looks as it imports, and you can see the clothing and everything is on there. You can also see that we have morph targets. So we are under the mesh tab for the skeletal mesh. Uh, the morph targets tab is over here on the right side, and you can see. Um, Right. Zero that back out. Let's find one that works a little bit better. There you go. She'll stick out her tongue. So you can see all of the morph targets are in place. Um, so do with those as you will. You have quite a lot to work with. We'll just stick that tab on the side. Now, what we want to do is find the fastest way to get this character that we just imported from Character Creator onto the ALS Blueprint. Here's the fastest way to do that. Grab the original template for ALS that is the working uh, default model. Say, go to Browse to Asset, find the blueprint for this ALS character copy it right over to the folder that we created our test character in and give it a new name. So we'll call it ALS sorry, underscore good enough. ALS underscore female and double click on him. Uh, it opens up in this collapsed view. Just go to Open Full Blueprint Editor on the top. Click on Viewport. Click on Mesh. Let's try that again. Click on Viewport. Click on Mesh. And where it says Skeletal Mesh over here, we're going to replace it with the Skeletal Mesh that we just imported. So click the purple underlying skeletal mesh for the character we just imported and come back over here and hit this arrow and it will replace with the body that we just created. Now what I have noticed every time I've done this is it doesn't want to replace these two textures for the face. Um, so you're going to have to manually replace those two, but it's really simple. Come over here to the first one, hit the magnifying glass. On the one that is set up correct, you're, we're still looking at the skeletal mesh uh, tab here. 
hit this magnifying glass, it'll take you right to the texture for that part of the body, and it's already highlighted, so you don't have to do anything else. Come back over here and hit the arrow to apply it. And we'll do that with the next texture as well. Magnifying glass already selected. Come back over here, hit apply, and that fixes the texture for the face. And I do believe the rest are fine. They, they import this fine. Just for whatever reason, those first two don't take. Uh, but it's an easy fix. Uh, and as long as you continue to use the animation blueprint uh, and everything else set up as it already is by default for ALS, this character will inherit everything that the ALS character has available to them. So all you have to do is place them in the world now. Go to the details panel once you place them in the world and make sure you select them as the character that you are going to inherit and make sure everyone else is turned off. And I will grab my control and turn it on. Something with the car room here and hit play. And I'll go ahead and play. Right away, she inherits all the controls. She can jump and run. Uh, on the more advanced version of ALS, I know she can climb and vault over ledges and all of that other stuff. But for now, um, all that works. You can see that her feet are hovering a few feet over the ground, or at least a few inches over the ground. That is because her she's sitting in an odd spot on her collision capsule. We'll just come back in here, go to left view or right view, select her mesh, and then manually drag her down to the bottom of the capsule. Hit compile again, and hit play again. And that fixes that. So now she's actually standing on the ground instead of floating over it. Yeah, there's your character from CC3 to applying accessories to importing them into Unreal and getting them set up on ALS. So we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, if you have any questions, absolutely let me know. If you want me to make any more videos going through any of the other steps of setting any of this stuff up, let me know. Uh, and that is all I have for the moment. So I'm going to end the video there. You guys have a good day.